Hey everyone, my name is Zach. I'm a 23-year-old competitive bowler from Canada, currently living in Montreal. Welcome back to the Comp Club training series, where I record most of my training, provide in-depth analysis of every session, and just chat about climbing with an emphasis on competition. So our first stop in today's episode is at Block Shop Hochelaga for a boulder session. If you recall, our first uh, episode while we are, have been in been here in Montreal was a couple sessions of bouldering also at Block Shop, except that was the Chabonel location of Block Shop. So this is also Block Shop, but it is a different gym in a different location. There are three locations of Block Shop, and this one I think was the second one to open. So this is the Hochelaga location. And this is also where we've been doing all of our spray wall training. That being said, we have not had a boulder session at this gym yet. So uh, this session was just going to be filled with brand new boulders, which I was very much excited for. And uh, if you remember in the last episode, you were hearing me complain a lot about my skin. Um, it's been getting quite pink with all the epic comp style bouldering we've been doing. And so I was actually a bit worried going into this session that I might actually have to call it a bit short. Um, especially because we have some, I had some exciting plans later in the day, which I will talk about later. Um, but I didn't want to like burn through all my skin on this morning session of bouldering and I was quite worried, but so honestly, it's been a while since I've had pink tips as well. Um, and so I've forgotten basically how to combat pink tips because I haven't had it as a problem in a while. And I remembered how well Rhino performance was working for me, um, in the past. And uh, this is not an ad, I am not sponsored by Rhino, but like if anyone like is suffering from pink tips and you don't know like a good climbing balm to use, personally, I definitely uh, swear by Rhino Performance for pink tips. It's like a way downed version of anti-hydral. It sort of adds like a, you know, a bit of a protective layer and it really came in clutch today. Like you'll notice, like we do a lot of bouldering in today's episode. Um, and this session was basically brought to you by Rhino because I thought I was going to have to like maybe even skip the whole day of training um, after our day on the spray wall the other day. You can see me like wincing from my skin. It was definitely a bit painful still, but yeah, I was surprised at how uh, well the Rhino saved me today. But let's tune into the session. Here we are trying a white tape. White tape is the hardest uh, grade at Block Shop. They, they, you'll, you'll notice they do V grades, but um, I sort of just pay attention to like the tape colors. So white tape is the hardest circuit, which is like V12 plus, and then black tape is the second hardest, which are V10 to 11, and then red tapes are V8 and 9s. And so Block Shop Hoshalaga, I think, is sort of known for being a bit softer than Block Shop Shab. So you'll notice I was struggling like a lot more at the Chabonel location of Block Shop. And there were even a couple white tapes at Chabonel that I didn't even touch on that day of training because they looked a bit too hard uh, for what I was going for. And like today, we we're going to get on some white tapes um, that were like quite epic boulders, but they were definitely not as hard as the Chabonel um, the uh, Chabonel white tapes, and even the black tapes are a little bit softer too. Uh, that being said, they do have some hard boulders, of course, and this red one that we're trying here, I think actually ended up being the hardest boulder in the gym, in my opinion, at least. Like probably the most difficult boulder to climb, but not the boulder that was hardest for me, because this one was it was quite my style. We have like some physical moves, uh, some pinches, um, but I think I was also quite struggling on this boulder because these holes are like quite slippery and you have to squeeze them really hard. And while Rhino performance isn't quite like anti-hydro level where it makes your fingertips glassy, it definitely takes away a little bit of the stick. And so I was finding that I was having to squeeze like extra hard on these red holds uh, to send this boulder. But yeah, this boulder was quite nice. It was a lot of fun. We start with a quite tricky toe catch move actually. It feels like you can almost static this first move. And so I fell a few times trying to like half static it and then catch the toe hook at the end. But then uh, the way I was able to stick the move was I really just went a bit more dynamically and forced the toe catch, which uh, you'll know from the, if you've been following the channel that toe catches in general are a weakness of mine. And what I'm really realizing is you have to just fully commit to going dynamic and using a lot of force for the toe hook to latch and get tension. And that is how I've been finding like a lot of success with toe catches when I, when I do figure them out. Um, the times that I realize I struggle are when I like kind of half commit to the toe catch and then I'm not bending my arm enough and my leg isn't sort of straight to get the tension with the toe hook. 
And speaking of toe catches, this boulder was the boulder of the session. I just could, like, when I walked into Huchalaga for the first time and I saw this boulder, I've just been itching to get on it ever since. It's like super pretty. It's got some crazy moves. Obviously we can see there's sort of a campus toe catch at the beginning that I'll get to try in a second. But for now I'm doing a running of the ending. And this is, uh, I think I was talking about this in the last episode when we were climbing at beta block with sometimes with the uh, longer boulders, I'll like to do a run of the ending first so that I don't get super pumped on a flash co. And actually with this boulder as well, I also wanted to run the ending because my skin, like while Rhino was helping out quite a lot, it was still in the danger zone, right? And this boulder where we're doing a very intense campus move into like a toe catch and the times when you don't stick the hold, you're gonna be firing off of this like fiberglass hold. That is not exactly what you wanna be doing with pink tips. Like that attempt in particular, ouch, that hurt. And so I wanted to make sure that I could do the ending so that as soon as I stuck that move, the boulder could just be done with. And the last thing I'd wanna do is have to do that move uh, more than I had to. But uh, yeah, the ending turned out to be like pretty, pretty comfortable. And so I knew that as soon as I did the first move that I could probably do the boulder. And speaking of this first move, this move is gonna to feature today's tip of the day. So something that I really had to emphasize, uh, a technique that I had to use on this move to succeed was using um, a pull mid swing to redirect my momentum. So this move is not super, super big. Like I could definitely get the distance of this move with my sort of standard, you know, swing once or twice, really get the, the body elongated and then get that sort of whip crack uh, momentum going in order to swing over to the slipper. Like that in itself is gonna get me the distance. But the key element of this move obviously is getting the toe hook to latch. And the toe hook you need to be, have like the right amount of momentum, but also the right direction. And uh, I found that my toe hook was not getting far enough. And so what I decided to start doing and emphasizing was in the middle of my last sort of whip crack swing to get the, the like the sort of bounce and like zero gravity moment that you need to achieve for this uh, sort of campus move, right in the middle and at the apex, what I would do is I would sort of not just whip crack with my lats and my shoulders, but also sort of not just pull with my arms. Like, yes, it is a pull. Like I used my bicep, I almost sort of whiplashed, whip cracked out of my biceps. And what I did is I, I sort of flicked my momentum a bit inwards, because you'll notice that this cave, or obviously the toe hook is in a cave. And so basically mid swing, I sort of did a read, I pulled a bit inwards and to the right to redirect my lower body so that I would swing around and catch the toe hook rather than sort of just swing straight in front of me, which is not where the toe hook is. So basically the sort of more general tip of the day that we can take from this is that like just in any sort of campus swinging, you know, dynamic campus moves, which are very trendy in comps these days. Um, and then especially if feet are involved, like later on in the sequence, like this toe hook move is here, uh, really, really make sure that you're creating the right direction to sort of land you in the end position that you want. And a way that you can do this is by not just, you know, doing your ger generic swing in order to get you the distance, but also doing pulls in different directions mid swing to help redirect the rest of your body to end up where you want it to. And that was really important for me on this move. I had to sort of, uh, on this attempt, it's, it's pretty uh, visible. You'll notice like at, in the middle of my last swing, I do a bit of like a jerk with my biceps to redirect my, mo my body inwards. And uh, it was pretty clutch. And I was able to conquer, uh, this is uh, like a toe catch move, which is my weakness, but it was actually more in the campus. And that was sort of the crucial element of this move and not so much the toe hook itself, but I stuck a toe catch, which I'm happy with. And uh, let's check that out now. This boulder though is like a 10 star boulder, holy cow. I have just been so excited to get on this boulder and I was scared that I might have to skip out on it because of the state of my skin, but I could not control myself. And actually what I realized on this boulder is the attempts where I was able to like sort of master my momentum really well, it actually wasn't that aggressive on the hands and I would sort of absorb my momentum nice and comfortably onto the sloper rather than, you know, sort of tr like fire right off of it and shred my skin. So what I would do is like in the middle of my swing, I could tell whether my momentum was good. And then based on how good it was, I would determine how much I would actually commit to the move. If I could tell my momentum was off, I would sort of try and chicken out so that I wouldn't shred my skin on a fall. But the times that I felt like moment my momentum was really good, I would commit to the move because 
I knew that I would load the sloper really well and I wouldn't shred my skin. And the only factor of me falling would be my toque would just miss. And then I would just sort of nicely and gently let go of the sloper. Uh, but that was just like some, an interesting thing that I was uh, doing on that boulder, I think. And so uh, those were both the two white tapes up in the gym. There was only two of them. I think both block shop locations usually just only have two white tapes up at a time. So I managed to finish those down. But honestly, I was looking at some of the black tapes and some of the black tapes look harder than those two white tapes. And so the, the hard part of the gym was definitely by no means conquered. So now we're moving on to some more black tapes. This one here is a 10 and it had some pretty cool moves. Uh, this was a nice hard boulder on a vert wall. And that was like, if, if anyone has been following since the Germany videos, one of my favorite parts of climbing at Studio Block all the time was the, the boulders. They were really good at setting hard boulders on vert walls, which is something that I find isn't as prevalent in Ontario. I'm used to sort of climbing on hard boulders on overhanging walls. So I am sort of like the holds are usually positive and I don't get a chance to train on like really, really bad holds where the body positioning is really important. And so a lot of these Montreal gyms and especially like block shop are really good at setting hard boulders on vertical walls, which means the holds are bad and the positioning of your body is like really, really important. And this is something that this is like the, one of the most important styles of climbing to work on and practice as a competitive boulder, I think that along with coordination. Uh, so I'm just happy that these gyms are great at setting hard boulders on like vertical and slab walls. And uh, cause you know, we can train hard boulders on overhang on like a spray wall or something, right? But it's really, really hard to come by these hard vertical boulders, uh, which I'm very appreciative that I get to train on now all the time. Speaking of hard vertical boulders, here we are moving on to another one. And this boulder was a bit unsuspecting. I, I saw it and I'm like, okay, yeah, it looks obviously a bit tricky. Uh, I knew that I would have to be a little bit careful of my shoulder here on this press move. Like I couldn't quite, uh, I was thinking like maybe when we have the start hold and our foot on the jib, maybe it could be sort of a dynamic, like we just jump into a double press, which might actually be the intended sequence. But I knew that I definitely could not try it like that because, uh, you know, jumping dynamically into a mantle position is exactly how I hurt my shoulder. And it's still not 100% recovered. I'd say it's probably like 90, 95%. I definitely felt a bit of ache when I'm like in this position here where my shoulder like sort of kind of pressing, but not too aggressively. And so I definitely had to be careful on this move, but I knew that I couldn't quite, uh, I couldn't try like a dynamic jump into these presses. So I had to try and figure out another sequence. Uh, so I am finding like this sequence here where I can go to the left and then sort of smash up a press into the right hand. but. This position, like it looks like it should be super comfortable. And then we, we're jumping to like a pretty positive hold and then there's a nice juicy foot to stab to. But this like left foothold jib on the volume that we're jumping out of, it feels like super bad and slippery and like it could slip at any second. And it's a really, really insecure feeling position to jump out of, which made for like a really cool move. Um, and the, the foot that we're stabbing to as well as like, not quite left enough for it to be a super comfortable layback, which means I keep barn dooring a little bit too much to be able to control this move. And so I actually don't think that the foot stab was the intended sequence because of this sequence that I was able to find here, or you actually can do a foot match on this foot chip, get your left foot up first. And then now we're like set up better for this uh, move and we don't have to add the element of foot stab. We just have to sort of take the, the swing. Um, so I actually, I was starting to get like, like psyched out on this boulder. I'm like, Hey, what's going on? Like, this is a, this is a 10. There's like, you know, two grades harder of this boulder. Like, why am I struggling so much on this? Maybe am I just like really bad at the style, but I think, uh, maybe I was adding a little bit too much spice with this foot stab beta. Um, and then once I figure out this foot match, it goes a lot better, but this boulder was quite good. And <laughs> I actually. I think what happened on this attempt here where I like kind of desperately stick that move is my left foot slipped a little bit actually, but didn't quite slip all the way off the hold. It just slipped to the bottom of it and which made for like a really wacky looking stick of that move. But uh, yeah, like that boulder was a good example of just like why it's so good for me to just get like massive amounts of volume, like get so many, so many different boulders 
in as possible, like in a bouldering session. Um, just because the more boulders I get to try and figure out, the smarter my brain will become and the better like my just intuition for moves will be. Like I uh, sort of wanted to try and do that last move, like try and stay like really square and do like a jump and a foot stab. But I was able to sort of figure out a more twisty way that is not sort of more natural for me. And I had to like get my you know spine twisting a bit in order to do this foot match in order to get the left foot up first for that move. And um, it ended up being better. And so I'm sort of just expanding my climbing vocabulary by trying like lots and lots of boulders and just trying my absolute hardest to figure them out at all costs, which is exactly what comp style bouldering is all about. There were a couple more black tapes up in the gym, but they were a bit crimpy and physical looking. So, and meanwhile, at this point, I'm already going like a little bit overtime in my session. So I decided to finish off the session with a couple fun looking moderates that I knew I had to get on, even though I was already overtime at this point, like while we were trying the black, I decided to go a little bit extra overtime and try these red tapes because they look super fun. And I actually ended up going way over time and I climbed for an hour and a half, um, which is a lot more than my hour long boulder session is supposed to be, but uh, it was a lot of fun. So I've got a fun announcement. I know some viewers have been looking forward to this collaboration and I personally have been as well for a while. Uh, I finally linked up with Loy and we did a video. So Loy is a fellow climber in Montreal. He's a super strong, nice guy. He started a YouTube channel like a couple months ago and he puts out like these really well-made vlogs that are a lot of fun to watch. And he's got like fun crew people, like psyched strong people in Montreal that he'll climb with. And of course, uh, with uh, Maddie and I moving to Montreal, we're bound to run into Loy and it's finally time. So obviously for today's day of training, I have another boulder session uh, on the program, but uh, I did not film it myself. What I did instead is I went to Alley Up at, in the, at the Mile End location and I linked up with Loy and Toma and um, Antoine. And we filmed a fun vlog and you can head over to Loy's channel to check that out. I will link it in the description, obviously. And uh, I think when at the time this video is coming out, I'm sure his vlog will be like a little bit delayed. So what you should do is you should go subscribe to Loy and keep an eye out for that video. It, it was a lot like that. I just got back from the session like a couple hours ago and it was a whole lot of fun. It was really hype. And you know, Loy is obviously a fellow content creator in Montreal and we are bound to do more videos together in the future. So definitely subscribe to him and uh, keep an eye out for uh, me popping up on his channel and just him and his psych group people putting out fun Montreal content. So go check out Loy. So for now, what we're gonna go do is I'm gonna move into the campus session that I'm gonna do tomorrow currently when I'm filming this. And uh, I think Loy's gonna be there too as well. So uh, let's jump into that campus session right now. So here we are the next day at Block Shop for our campus session. And it turns out we're actually gonna have quite a strong crew joining us for this session. We're gonna have uh, Loy, like I mentioned, and three members of the Canadian team are all gonna take part in this like mega spray wall session. So we're gonna have Victor Baudran, who is living in Montreal. And then we got the McNamee twins as well, who, uh, Guy and Kinder, who are actually based out of BC, but are visiting Montreal for, I think a month, they were saying, um, just for like some training, uh, you know, look at all the amazing gyms and just spice it up a bit. I think they're gonna be here for like another week at this point when I'm making this video. Um, but yeah, we had like, it was like super lucky. All of our training schedules aligned on this day so that we could all coordinate this like mega spray wall session. Um, and it was like a whole lot of fun. So for me, uh, my session is campusing. So I have to just stick to the campus boulders and then everyone else was kind of doing like a mix of campusing and spray. Um, and so they were uh, trying some of my campus boulders like we got here. So this is uh, Guy, Guy McNamee, one of the strongest guys in Canada. Obviously he's on the team and you can tell by the way he's just campusing up these terrible holds and sticking this pinch, um, which I don't actually think I was able to do at any point in the session. And then here is his twin, uh, Kinder McNamee. So these guys are hard to tell apart from the back, obviously. So Kinder's in the orange shirt and we got Guy is in the gray shirt. 
And so, and then here we also have uh, Victor Baudran, who is also on the Canadian team and is super strong and uh, is a rose block athlete as well, as you can tell by his shirt. So the idea for this session was that I had made uh, a couple new campus bowlers that I haven't actually tried yet, which is uh, this one as well here that we're trying is one of the new ones. This is my first session attempting it. And I tried to set some extra hard campus boulders because um, we had like a super strong crew of guys and chances are somebody would be able to figure something out somewhere. And uh, here we got Loy putting in some attempts on. He was filming one of his vlogs today, so he was just trying to squeeze in some attempts while he was like filming everybody climbing. He had his work cut out for him today for sure, uh, trying to get all of his footage and, and train at the same time. Um, but it was a lot of fun. And so here we are all trying this move. Uh, the McNamees were definitely outperforming me and Victor on this move to the pinch. Uh, we couldn't really stick the red pinch and then the McNamees could stick it, but couldn't move off of it. So we determined that that boulder was a little bit too spicy and decided to move on to some other ones. This boulder here that um, Victor is trying is one that he set. And so this one has got like a pretty fun move in the middle. And like I was saying, uh, Victor lives in Montreal and he trains often on the spray wall. And he was telling me how he's got a lot of like cool campus boulders and spray wall boulders that he wants to put me on. And um, I'm pretty lucky. I'm gonna have almost like the, a bit of kilter board syndrome with the spray wall. Cause he, you know, Victor along with a few other people have just already like, you know, put up a lot of hard boulders that are forerun, tested and are all like really quality that I can just try. And uh, I've mentioned this quite a bit in the past, that is that how difficult like the forerunning process of training on the spray wall can be and how it can be a bit tedious and like time consuming when I'm like doing spray wall sessions all the time. And so it's just gonna be super awesome to just hop on a bunch of hard like Victor boulders and um, know that I can just like test myself rather than trying to like figure out if a move is possible or not. So anyway, you can look forward to some of some more of that coming up in the future. But for now, I think that this boulder, he sort of just made up on the spot. So we were all kind of like testing it and forwarding it together. But this one we could tell was like quite doable. And uh, we didn't have to worry about um, it being like a theory boulder. And so yeah, this boulder obviously sort of revolves around this move here in the middle which I think is honestly starting to become uh, quite my style kind of move. Like the side to side campus, like lache move over to the side. Um, I had a lot of practice with this kind of move at Studio Block when we were living in Germany. They, they definitely set a lot of this sort of swinging campus coordination stuff uh, in a lot of the gyms while we were in Germany. So I learned a lot about that move and I feel quite confident now when I have to approach this kind of move and I have uh, a feeling that it's like kind of my style now, which is very handy because it is a, quite a trendy move on the comps these days. So after playing around on that last boulder for a while, I wanted to, this boulder as um, one of the boulders I definitely wanted to put everybody on. So this one is actually not new. We tried this boulder in my first campus session that I had on the spray wall. And this was definitely one of my favorites that I made. It's uh, quite fun. It's got a fun sequence where we go like down and then back up and then moving off of this black sloper is definitely the crux. This hold is like quite bad and it's like very finicky. There's a whole lot of different ways you can try and grab it and it's very difficult to try and pick one. But what you're about to see here is Kinder getting the most monstrous and beastly flash of this boulder. Um, Kinder is looking really strong these days. I was not expecting anybody to be flashing this. I definitely knew that um, these guys could do it, especially uh, like the McNamees and Victor are known for like being really strong on slopers. And so I wanted to see how they would perform on this uh, black sloper, but I was not ready for Kinder to just flash this boulder like super easily. And that was really fun to see. And then um, uh, Guy does it like shortly after as well. I think, I don't actually remember if I got a video of him. Uh, oh yeah, he's about to flash on the screen here. Okay, I started the camera a little bit late, but Guy also sent this boulder. And so now it was left to me and Victor to try and uh, keep up with them. And this session was honestly quite refreshing 
Um, two, because as you'll know, I train on my own a lot of the time and I don't get to train with like, uh, like, you know, Canadian team members, like a whole lot, especially when I was living in Ontario, there aren't uh, a whole lot of them around. And Montreal is like starting to become a bit of a hub for just like strong climbers and like team members will visit like the McNamee's are right now. And then, you know, we got Victor living here. And so it's gonna be really cool to have uh, some sessions with just like, you know, my exact competition and the sort of like competitive rivals that I go and compete against at nationals or like on international competitions and just to be able to push each other in training and, you know, have all these guys be super nice and super friendly. And, you know, we're all just like genuinely friends, which is super cool with, and makes like the training even better because it's not like we're, you know, getting upset when someone is like, you know, shining like on a boulder or something. We're all like rooting for each other and pushing each other. And uh, yeah, this crew in particular today was like, um, we we're all having a lot of fun, uh, hyping each other up. And uh, I can't, I'm like really, really looking to for it looking forward to more of this while Maddie and I are living in Montreal. So let's talk about this boulder that we're trying um, now. So this boulder you can see, it's like says it's set by Zach on the Stoke app that we see on the right, but this boulder was set by the McNamees. Um, while Victor and I were still working on my slopey boulder uh, on the right, the McNamees headed over to the left side of the wall and started crafting like a nasty looking crimp line. And, um, so the McNamees had a fun little challenge for me. They put a couple attempts on this boulder and then it was time for my attempt. And they said, okay, Zach, if you flash this boulder, we're gonna buy you a bag of Friction Labs chalk. And then the, the challenge was on and I tried like extra hard because if anybody knows uh, Friction Labs, uh, like a bag of like unicorn dust or something, it's like 40 bucks. And so it turns out I actually ended up flashing this boulder and then I said, to the McNamees right away, like there's no way you're buying me a bag of Friction Labs chalk. I'm not letting you spend 40 bucks uh, on, on chalk for me. But their challenge uh, helped hype me up to get a fun flash of this boulder, which I actually didn't think was gonna be super my style. Like I'm okay on the crimps, but um, I guess I just uh, had the extra, the Friction Labs motivation to get a fun flash of this boulder. And so I was still inspired and motivated by how easily uh, Kinder flashed this campus boulder. And I think he actually did it on a second try. So I decided to spend the rest of my session seeing if I could take it down. I am only supposed to be having a 45 minute long campus session. So I was having to make sure that I didn't get too carried away with all of like the, the hype uh, from the crew session. And so I only went like five minutes over time. I was glad that I was able to control myself quite a bit. And so here we go, actually, after I did like a practice run of the ending and I stuck the move individually, I'm finally gearing up for a send attempt on this boulder. Took a couple sessions to finally put this one down and it was quite satisfying. I find when I like walk away from a slopey boulder that has like a hold where it's really important how well you're sticking to it, like this black sloper, if I walk away from it and come back, sometimes my skin will have like calmed down a bit and it can be easier to stick on a hold. And that's what I actually found was the case on that black slipper. It just started to get a bit too greasy. And so by walking away to do the McNamee's crimp holder and then coming back, I actually felt quite a bit stickier and uh, that helped to do that move. So at this point, my session was done. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, um, the McNamee's and Victor continued on with just some regular spare wall bouldering. And so I wanted to get see who wanted to try this boulder, which uh, you may remember from our last episode. This was, is probably the, my favorite boulder that I've set on this wall so far. You know, I've only had one session, so I've only put a few ones up, but this one so far I think has a cool sequence. And I said to Gian Kinder, okay, I wanna, I'm not gonna tell you guys any beta. I wanna see what you come up with because if you recall when I was trying this boulder, my sequence was changing like quite a lot and I thought that this boulder was quite cryptic. And so I wanted to see if the McNamees could find a better way to do it than I did. And we'll notice here on this attempt, Guy actually does find a different way to do this boulder than I had initially. So when I did this boulder, I went left hand to the black pinch, right hand to the black crimp, and then left hand to this uh, purple sloper 
And then I ended up like crossing to this orange hold that Guy is on now. But Guy found this crazy sequence where he crossed back, um, bring up the heel and uh, I mean, the video speaks for itself. I guess I didn't tell them which finish hold, uh, which hold was actually the finish. They both uh, matched the second last hold as a finish hold, but uh, the last move is not too bad. So they both definitely sent this boulder. So that wraps up a couple days of training with some awesome people. And now for me, what I have next is right now I'm gonna take two rest days actually. And then Maddie and I and the McNamees are all gonna drive up together to Vermont for the Dark Horse competition um, that I've had on my calendar for a while, as you may have noticed. So you can look forward to a recap video from that event coming up in the next episode. <clears throat> Insert catchy video out here.